Ahoy! Today we're talking about one of the new items, Stone of File. Stone of File got entirely reworked in the most recent patch and is definitely a strange niche item at the moment. We're going to talk about who can potentially use it and if they can use it well. Also, sorry about my absence during the past days, my cats got sick, so that took priority for a while. So first up, what are Stone of File's new stats? It's a tier 3 item in the Druid Stone Tree, the tier 2 also being reworked and being a 1400 gold in between item. Stone of File, the final form, is 2500 gold, so relatively expensive, comes with 100 health, 35 magical power, 30 physical and 30 magical protection, and a unique passive. Whenever you hit an enemy guard with a basic attack, you gain 2% damage mitigation. This has up to 3 stacks, and at 3 stacks you gain double the damage mitigation and 20% crowd control reduction. This effect lasts for 10 seconds. In other words, first you have 2% mitigation, then 4%, and then 12%. So it's an all-rounder bruiser item that relies heavily on utilizing a lot of basic attacks to get the effect. It's important to understand how this item really works. The first and second stack of this item will actually stay on you as long as you're not getting a third stack. So essentially, as long as you're not using a basic attack on an enemy guard, you can run around with 4% damage mitigation. Once you hit three stacks, the counter of the item is actually removed and it's a completely unique, different item effect, which is a bit confusing if you're not paying close attention because you're wondering when is the third stack gonna happen. But at this moment, you have a timer above the effect and that lasts for 10 seconds, which is the 12% mitigation and the 20% crowd control reduction. In other words, you can technically pre-stack this before a fight. The problem is that you have to find an enemy guard that you can hit with basic attacks beforehand to make that happen. Not exactly something most enemies would enjoy. Now the next question that I'm sure will pop up is, does this stack with other mitigation items? And the answer here is yes. All mitigation items stack and I have verified that this works with Stone of Binding as well so you can stack away and get high mitigation values. If that is what you should aim to do, it's another conversation that we'll have in a bit. Before we get into the next part, a painful reminder that I'd love to not have to do, but if you enjoy the video, please click the like button. It makes a massive difference for what YouTube does to the video in the algorithm. Now let's look at a few similar options and see what they offer in terms of stats for what price. The first one that we can put into the race against Stone of Fall here is Oni Hunter's Garb. Oni Hunter's Garb is quite a fair bit cheaper with a 2100 gold price tag. It comes with 100 health, so 50 health less. It doesn't offer any physical protection, but has 60 magical protection, so double what Stone of Fell offers. It also doesn't offer any power, but comes with 20% crowd control reduction front loaded, so this is applied at any point. It also comes with 30 MP5, which is not exactly a combat bonus, but can be very useful on mana hungry characters. Along with that, this item provides between 3 to 9% damage mitigation, depending on the number of enemies around you. Now, if you look at the background footage, the enemy team had a lever from the start of the game, and that is why I chose to build Stone of Fall in the first place, because that was the only scenario where I felt like actually trying it out. And I also built Oni Hunter's Garb, and in the fights later you will notice that basically in every fight I was in, even though it was only for enemies, I would have at least two stacks of Oni Hunter's Garb most of the time. Obviously, enemies split apart, 55 units isn't the biggest radius, and sometimes an enemy also just dies and then a stack goes away, but it was a relatively consistent value of 6% damage mitigation throughout. Uh, if you had five enemies, it would likely be closer to three stacks consistently most of the time. The mitigation from Stone of Fall was significantly less consistent because it completely hinges on when you can apply basic attacks to the enemy, so it's very guard dependent as well. And the 20% crowd control reduction was equally inconsistent because it only applies once you hit three stacks. I think especially the crowd control reduction being tied to the stacks is kind of weird. If we weren't comparing the passives and just looking at the stats, then in a head-to-head -head race between the two, I think it would be very situational because one is mixed defense and the other one is specifically magical defense. But Only Hunter's Garb is also quite a fair bit cheaper. So it's kind of weird that the stats are so comparable. And in my opinion, Only Hunter's Garb comes with at least the more reliable passive of the two. But there's another option that I think is even more interesting because it's in the same tree as Stone of Fall, and that is Stone of Binding. Stone of Binding is only 1,700 gold and offers the same physical and magic protection as Stone of Fall, 30 both, and only 5 less power with 30 instead of 35. 
The only thing it doesn't offer in the base stats is extra health, but 150 health for 800 extra gold? I don't think that is worth it. In that case, you could just build Stone of Binding and Ignoring Emerald. You'd get 100 health and you get 10 HP 5, which will end up roughly the same in a fight. And you still have 200 gold saved and you're also building towards the next item already. So I think base stat wise, there's a very clear winner here. Along with that, if you hit an enemy with crowd control, then they get their protection reduced by 10, both physical and magical, for 5 seconds. While this isn't necessarily comparable to what Son of Fal does, because one is aggressive and the other one is defensive, I would not necessarily say that it's worse than Son of Fal's passive either. It's a bit of an offense is the best defense mentality, I suppose, but it still provides a lot of extra damage for your entire team, and that's on a very cheap item that otherwise has almost comparable stats. So the question at this point is, does your guard have enough CC to utilize Stone of Binding better? And we'll get to the guard choices in a bit, so that'll clear that up. I wanted to throw one last option in the ring here, and that is Spirit Rope, which is actually at the same price point as Stone of Fall. This is probably the first item where the race is a little bit closer. Spirit Rope provides 40 physical and magical protection, as well as 20% crowd control reduction right off the bat, and 10% cooldown reduction. If crowd control reduction is very important and you need it, for most of the fight, then Spirit Robe wins this here, but in terms of overall tankiness, with the extra 150 health, Stone of Fowl may be in the lead in quite a few situations here. Spirit Robe provides you with 15% damage mitigation for 3 seconds on a 15 seconds cooldown after being hit by hard crowd control. I would say damage wise these two items are comparable depending on which guard you're playing. 35 power or 10% cooldown reduction can or cannot be more valuable depending on who you're using it on. The more important part is really that they work against different comps. Spirit Robe works best against crowd control heavy comps with a lot of quick burst that follows the crowd control. So for example, if the enemy team has a Poseidon. And I would say usually that is when the damage mitigation matters most and when something like 15% really has an impact. Stone of Fall, on the other hand, would have more of an impact if crowd control isn't the biggest problem and you can get away with using quite a few basic attacks in the fight. So looking at all these items, does Son of Fowl really have a place? If the enemy team has heavy crowd control, you get Spirit Rope. If you don't rely fully on the mitigation and you just want a good mix of defensive stats but you have a lot of CC, you can use Stone of Binding. If mitigation is the primary factor but the enemy team has a decent amount of magical damage, then you go only Hunter's Garp and you can maybe get another physical defense item, which is typically easier than building hybrid items in the first place. We also can look at the guards that can use this item well. The first ones that come to mind are guardians that use basic attacks like Athena, Kabrakin and Ymir. With all of these, you're going to be in the middle of the fight, you're going to get your Only Hunter's Garb stacks. With all of these, you can make very good use of Stone of Binding, setting up for your team and dealing a lot of damage. With all of these, it's pretty likely that you get CC'd when you engage and it's pretty likely that a Spirit Robe would help you quite a lot. Then you have guards like Sylvanas and maybe also Terra, who either have a good way to get basic attacks onto the enemy or just weave them into their kit more in general, because it gives them other benefits as well. They can stack it a little bit better, I would say, but for them the bigger question is when are you specifically looking for this mixed defense and mitigation without any team benefits? Typically, they are played in support, and when they're played in support, they are looking more for items that help their team, and Stone of Fowl doesn't do that at all. I would actually say that Stone of Binding will still help you more here because, again, they're also still using a lot of CC, a lot of setup, and otherwise you're looking for defensive auras and CDR and stuff like that, which is all not on Stone of Fall. Then you have more exotic playstyles for basic attack focused magical characters, like, for example, Solo Ao Kuang. I could see this working here because you can apply the stacks pretty quickly. But at the same time, the rest of the stats aren't inherently what you're after on a basic attacking slash mage solo. If you're building it towards basic attacking, which is how you would apply this very quickly, then you obviously want items and stats that synergize with that. I wouldn't entirely rule it out, but I would say it's at least super niche. Maybe a slightly better case can be made for basic attacking mages, but they are usually not after hybrid items. If they're going for defensive items, they're going for something that saves them from CC in the first place, like magis or winged blade. So, is there no one who can utilize this item well? Not quite. On one hand, we have one of the more obvious ones being Tiamat that could potentially use this item. 
I wouldn't say that she is the best user because typically you're not going to use all too many basic attacks in her range stance. You kind of have to adapt your playstyle to that a little bit more. And overall, it is kind of situational if you get the proc at the right time, if that's the time you want to engage in your melee stance or maybe not. And depending on that, you may get more or less out of it. So it's not something that I would generally recommend in most games. But there can technically be the new scenario where this is a usable item on her. Somebody else, however, makes much better use of it, and that is Jean Cui. Jean Cui loves bruiser items in general. He is ranged, and he can double stack the item effect with his book. So if you confirm those two basic attacks, you have two stacks immediately, meaning it only takes you two basic attacks to get the full passive effect. So if you're engaging, then you can consider just throwing in two basics before you use your ultimate and then going in with your ult. And during the ult, you will have an extra 12% mitigation. You don't even need to do some meme attack speed animosity build around it. You can build a typical Bruiser Shanqui build and this will fit in quite nicely because it has all the stats that you want and it gives you this extra benefit that you can kind of trigger on command. Especially when an enemy engages on you, it should be very easy to weave those two basic attacks in you need for the full stacks. She'll always have a little bit more survivability. So all we really need is for Shanqui to become meta, but that's another story. Now to address the argument of you can always build both as well. Yes, you can always build both, but in most situations, you have better things to build than just trying to hard stack as much mitigation as possible. Often you'll need specific defense, you'll need specific item effects, you'll need things like cooldown reduction or auras, and all of that is usually more beneficial than taking just a little bit less damage through the mitigation in some situations. It obviously depends, there is no general answer here, but I think overall a Stun of Fall is an incredibly niche item, and I would argue that it's a little bit overpriced for what it does on most characters, except for those very outlier cases. Most magical characters simply aren't built around basic attacks enough and will often even cancel their basic attacks to get an ability off quicker in many situations just because it's more important. So there are only very select few who can make use of it. If it was for physical characters, this would be an entirely different story. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you're new to the channel, feel free to sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of other upcoming videos. We still have another new item to talk about as well as more Gilgamesh information soon. And before I go, I'd like to thank my Patreons for making this video possible. That includes That Nick Walker, Donald Ryden, Melancholy Gengar, Dwayne Brennan, Lanter25 Green, Zed the Undead, Nevitz Jr., Rawas, and everyone else you see right here. Thank you guys so much for your support and making this possible for me. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.